Hey guys, it's Christian, your Vancouver Realtor, and the topic for today's video is the BC government will introduce new rules starting the spring of 2022. And this was released on the online newspapers today. A press release that said they're considering two changes. One is to the bidding process, and the second is they want buyers to have a cooling off period in the resale market. And so I want to talk to you a little bit about this today. I think the government's coming from a really good place. But as always, the NDP government is overreaching on this. And I hope that they will uh, really think these rule changes through. You know, a real estate purchase and sale is very nuanced. There's a lot of things going on. And the way the press release was worded, it really makes buyers look like victims in a hot real estate market. And it's not always like that. I mean, you can imagine just after the, the lockdown was announced, buyers would have had a field day. I mean, nobody could sell their property. For three months, you could have gotten slamming hot deals, fifty dollars to $100,000 off the asking price in some cases, right? So now the market has changed. Of course, buyers are a little bit upset about that. That's the nature of cycles. But let's, let's circle back to these new rule changes. And the very the first one I want to discuss with you is this cooling off period. And it sounds like a really good idea, right? We already see this in pre-sales. If you were to walk into a pre-sale center today and you you know went for a tour, you looked at the floor plans, the tower, you love the showroom, you can literally write an offer and you have a seven day rescission period, which means you got seven days to cool off. And if you change your mind, you can back out. All good. Here's the difference though. Pre-sale, that's a tower that's not even built yet. It might not, it may still be five years away. And resale, I mean, you that's a real house with a family living in it that wants to move out. And I've worked in the past with families, you know, my client's seven and a half, eight months pregnant. She wants to move in a new house. She wants to get her this one sold and move into another one. And if you've got buyers that are taking advantage of this new system. And there's a, there's several ways that they can take advantage of this. Uh, that could be uh, a really bad thing for homeowners and sellers. And so let's just get into a couple more uh, things here. Um, the government is saying they will quote, want to give a limited period of time during which a whole buyer can change their mind and cancel the purchase without any kind of legal consequences. Now that's the direct quote. Now, and again, it sounds good, but in practice, I found there's two ways buyers will manipulate and take advantage of home sellers. And uh, the first one is commonly, you have offer and acceptance, okay? And when you have acceptance, you have a seven day period or five business days where the buyer can do their inspection, they, can, they should do their financing, they can read all their strata documents and so on. And often what happens at the very end of that period, not always, but sometimes, the buyer says, you know what, Mr. Seller, if you want me to go ahead with this, I want $30,000 off right now, or I'm not doing it. And that happens. And every realtor who's been in the business for, uh, for a while knows it. And I think that the government should put something in their legislation to make sure that the buyers can't take the sellers for a, for a spin like that, because that, that's very unethical and very unfair. Uh, the second thing that we see, and I've seen personally, is my clients, uh, and not my clients, but every couple of years is one person who wants to make offers on two or three properties at the same time. And if, this, if the BC government is going to introduce legislation that says uh, the, they can, a buyer can back out, they should at the very same time install it in that legislation wording that says a buyer cannot be offering on multiple properties at the same time because that's just unethical. And they could do that potentially by establishing a registry. Uh, so I hope that they, the BC NDP gives that some thought because there's, it's not just homeowners here getting, you know, having a good time and getting all these offers over asking. Sometimes it's the buyers that are really taking the sellers uh, out to back and, and taking them for a spin, and that should be considered as well. 
Now, a couple of other things I, I want to talk to you about here is the consequences. So if they were to introduce this new uh, uh, law, which says that the buyer now has a seven day rescission period, cooling off period in resale, I think there's a, the next four or five things are going to be very important for home sellers. And you really are going to want to pay attention to this. The very first thing is backup offers are going to become really important in this situation because I can imagine there's gonna be a lot of buyers who are gonna tie up a property and they may not go forward with it right because they won out in a multiple offer in a bidding war now they feel they're overpaying by twenty thirty thousand dollars they back out and it automatically goes to the number two and so backup offers are gonna be very very important in this situation number two uh, deposit money up front so as you're making an offer you may put your bank draft in up front if this legislation allows for it they do this in vancouver island in in certain areas it makes sense to do it because it shows a sincere genuine interest on the buyer's part right otherwise it's just a paper offer anybody can sit down and write an offer for two million three million on one property or another but it's really uh um having some money, having some skin in the game is very, very important here. Third thing is the seller's agent, I already do this myself, but seller's agents will really need to carefully qualify the buyer's agent and the buyers themselves. It's obvious you wanna qualify the buyers for the property. You wanna make sure they're gonna get financing. You may even ask to see the, the uh, um, loan approval or pre-approval that they have from the bank, a copy of that. I certainly would if this becomes the new law. And I would qualify the buyer's agent on top of that. You know, there's a lot of agents that may be in the business two, three months. They don't know what they're doing. They're rookie realtors. And we wanna make sure that they have asked the right questions of their clients. Very important to do that. And uh, so that would qualifying buyers and their agents. Fourthly, uh, and I just mentioned, I would wanna see proof financial qualifications like a pre-approval from the buyer. And fifth, uh, I would love the province to set up a buyer registry so that we know for a fact that the buyers are not manipulating this process, that they're not tying up multiple properties. Uh, and then at the last minute, uh, you know, holding the seller to the wall saying you know give me a give me a price reduction or i'm pulling out you know and maybe sometimes they're they're they have two sellers they're playing two sellers off against each other it doesn't happen that often but it does i have seen it so it's not uh, um out of the ordinary so i hope that makes sense to you now on to blind bidding the there was a small part in this news release state where the province said they were going to set up some sort of a registry well, this is interesting. You know, the, if they do that, I think that would be a positive step. It would introduce more transparency. The way the bidding process, by the way, realtors call it a multiple offer. That's the term for it in the industry. But if you had a bidding process uh, and a registry, that would make it more transparent. Now we know that in fact, this is the agent and, and these are their clients who are making an offer on this property. and. In a, on occasion, I've seen a buyer's agents, uh, or sorry, seller's agents manipulate this process where they may lie and say they have an offer when they don't have one, hoping to push another party up. It's very rare. It's not worth it as a realtor to do this because you'd be, it's, it's breaking the rules and you'd be losing your license potentially. Uh, but uh, every, every, you know, a hundred deals or so, I, I come across as a realtor, I just think, yeah, I don't know about those guys. So I want something that would be official and uh, where we know that the seller's agents are on the up and up uh, in terms of the bidding process. I think that could help. I know in Australia, what they do is they actually literally do the bidding process right there on the sidewalk. And you know, uh, once it starts, uh, it, once the people have signed up for it, the buyers, and they're making offers, if they win the offer, that house is there theirs and if two minutes later the door falls off the hinges it doesn't matter they've bought that house it's done because you have three to four weeks prior to that auction process in australia uh 
where you would do your inspection, your financing, and etc. on that home. So very, it's very similar to the multiple offer process here in Vancouver, except it's not face to face. So it hasn't helped home prices in Australia. They're pretty high over there too. Uh, so moving along, I think there's a few questions here that need some answering. And that is, uh, you know, why the government constantly feels like they need to protect us from every conceivable possible risk because that's what it seems like this is an effort to do uh, the it just seems like it's overkill all right uh moving along last thing here in the news is the rent freeze if you're a, an investor landlord you owe multiple properties uh the bc government as you know has had a freeze on rental increases this has been in effect since the lockdown of 2020 as of 2022, you will be able to increase rent again only by 1.5%. And you've got to give three months notice to your tenants. So a little bit of a change from the one month notice and the inflation increase. Prior to this, the, B, the NDP had a, a government had allowed owners to increase rent by inflation. Prior to that, under the liberal government, uh, you were allowed to increase rent by inflation plus 2%. And so we, you can see how they've slowly uh, uh, really curtailed uh, this uh, rent increases. I, I think this again is unfair because in the last couple, several years, we've seen the costs of home ownership for landlords go up by two to $300 on a basic one bedroom downtown. I mean, strata fees have gone up, property taxes have gone up, insurance has definitely gone up. And, and yet, and certainly the price of, of having to replace appliances and if, if you're um, you know, having to call in a contractor to, to do work on the property, the prices of those have all gone up as well. And yet that is not factored in. You can just see that it, politically, I think this is a great move by the BC NDP because you know, there's a lot more renters out there uh, who are potential voters than there are landlords. So it makes sense for them politically to do this. Uh, that, and that's probably one of the reasons why they're doing it. Uh, but it's certainly another kind of uh, uh, beat down of landlords and homeowners, unfortunately. So that is a quick update on the rental situation. So if you enjoy the content, the stories, give us a thumbs up and we'll see you next time.